Hi everyone, today I'm sharing part two of my Day in the Life number one um, interactive album that I have constructed in the part one video. So if you missed that, then I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Uh, so here I'm adding my photos, my journaling cards, some embellishments and some stamping to finish up my project. Um, there will be a Day in the Life two in the fall. So um, I'll put these all together in a chipboard album after I complete that. But I'll have the process video for how I completed uh, this particular day in the life um, here today and I'll do a quick flip through at the end of this video as well. So I've printed out 12 three by four photos that I took throughout the day. Um, the way I went about taking the photos was I did uh, one photo um, every two hours while I was at work um, approximately and uh, one photo every hour that I wasn't at work. Um, and I just set an alarm and um, during times when it was like convenient for me um, or if I was doing something um, kind of like routine or every day I would set up my phone camera and and try to take some nice selfies of myself and some of the things that were around me. And I've printed out 12 journaling cards from Ali Edwards' digital day in the life kit um, from 2021 uh, to go along with each of those photos. And I did do some color editing and some journaling on these digital cards um, using Paint and Microsoft Word. So um, if you're interested in how I did that, I'll put a link to my process video um, tutorial up in the corner above. And I'm just pairing up the journaling card uh, with the corresponding photos that I took during those times um, and adhering those pairs to the um, six by four flaps that I have in my interactive album here. Next, I'm taking these uh, glitter enamel dots from Coco Daisy's memory keeping kit, and I'm just going to use one of the small ones to fill in uh, the check boxes where it says I, we, or you um, under the today journaling card. Um, and I'm trying to pick colors that correspond with the color of the journaling card so that they match. For some of the hours of the day, I had taken more than one photo, so I decided to include them by using these um, uh, additional mini photo flaps that I had cut um, during my album construction tutorial. And you'll just see me add one of those in here. Um, and just to prevent the mini flap from interfering with um, the way that main flap folds down, I'm just going to trim off a tiny bit off the um, long edge of that photo flap, um, just so that it's not overhanging where the score line is, um, where I need to fold that flap down. And basically this just gives me additional room to add up to two more photos um, for that hour if I choose to do so. So here I'm just continuing to attach my um, photos and my journaling cards to the album. So I've superly sped this up, but basically the layout is going to be um, when you first open the album, it's going to be uh, kind of like the morning time um, on the first three flaps. And then when you flip those up, going to reveal kind of like noon time and the uh, early afternoon um, and then the bottom three flaps will be kind of late afternoon to evening and then once those flaps flip over they'll reveal the three final flaps for the late evening of the day. You'll see me sometimes place that piece of pattern paper underneath my photo flap and that's just because um, when the craft card stock is like lying against the background craft card stock, it's kind of hard to see where the edge of that card stock is. So um, by putting the piece of pattern paper behind my um, photo flap, it kind of gives me a sense of like where I can put the photo to um, have it be more centered just because um, my eyesight isn't very good. And um, there's not a lot of contrast between like the craft card stock um, base and the photo flap. So that's why you're seeing me do that sometimes. Here you'll see I've printed out those extra photos that I was going to add to those um, extra photo flaps that I've attached to my album. Um, and before I do that, I just want to make sure that I um, include one of these tabs so that um, it shows the viewer um, that there is something behind there that I should flip up um, and reveal the photos behind. So I'm using some of the Coco Daisy planner tabs that came in their main uh, planner collection. They always have some of these uh, cool looking tabs and they are adhesive backed. So um, it's kind of nice that I don't have to um, fiddle around with some tape or um, 
some double-sided adhesive to get this down. And I'm just using a stamp set from Everyday Explorers to stamp uh, the word lunch to um, add to that planner tab before I adhere it down to my photo flap. And this is the Home Chef stamp set from Everyday Explorers. For a couple of these um, hours of the day, I didn't have um, an extra two photos. I only had one extra photo. So to um, cover up that additional side of the photo flap, I decided to pull out some of these um, pocket cards from Coco Daisy's um, Modern Memory Keeping Kit. And uh, that one that said Living Our Best Story uh, worked pretty well for that there. And for this particular photo flap, I didn't like the colors of any of the uh, planner tab die cuts for this uh, color scheme that I had going on here. So I pulled out this uh, sticker sheet from the main planner kit and it worked really well with the colors that I had going on. Um, and I also stamped it with uh, Kelly stamps um, around here stamp that said uh, routine. For this next photo flap, I have uh, the journaling card that says life is short, take more pictures. And that's also from the Coco Daisy Modern Memory Keeping Kit. And for that particular planner tab, I stamped using the Studio Calico. Um, this is called Good Times Stamp Set. And on the front, I stamped snippets of life. And on the back, I stamped I love right now. Um, and I thought that went really well with uh, me visiting my boyfriend. Next, I have Kelly Perky's Best of Times stamp set. Uh, this came in one of her older um, kits back when she had the Kelly Perky shop. Um, this is unfortunately retired, but in the paper person's shop, I did notice that they had um, a bigger stamp set with some of the bigger numbers that look like uh, digital kind of alarm clocky numbers. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link down uh, in the description box below where you could find that. And I'm just basically stamping the times that each of these photos was taken. And I'm making sure to use my Ranger Archival ink when I'm stamping on the photo paper. Um, and the Gina K Amalgam ink is what I like to use for just uh, the regular journaling cards that I have there. And you'll notice that before I stamp on the photos or the journaling card, I'm making sure to open up the flap so that I'm stamping on as flat a surface as possible to get a clear impression. And um, sometimes my head will come into the camera shot because I'm just trying to line up these numbers as best I can. And this took me a bit of time to do, um, to go through all of the pictures and find out what times I took them at and then stamp the times in. But I love the way that it turned out. I had been debating about, um, for some of the darker photos, stamping on like a label or a tag and then adding it in um, on top of the photos. But I like the way that it kind of um, looks very organic, I feel, uh, when it's just stamped in black on top of the photo. Another thing that I was considering was using a digital stamp set to add the times into the photos. Um, Kelly Stamps has a really nice um, kind of alarm clocky digital number set like the, this Kelly Perky stamp set. Um, and I was debating about purchasing that, but I felt like, because I already had the Kelly Perky stamp set in my stash, so I felt like I might as well use that. Um, definitely in the future, like or for your projects, if you um, feel like you want to add those numbers in, you could definitely check Kelly stamps out, and I will put a link down in the description box below for that as well. Another thing to note is that um, after I stamped on the photo paper with the archival ink, I did still leave the pages open for uh, a few minutes while I was working on the other times, just so that the ink can dry and it doesn't smear on to the other photos that it's touching. Um, just because on the glossy photo paper, you want to give it that extra time uh, just in case it doesn't absorb into the paper as fast. And I do like archival ink because it tends to dry fairly quickly and it does... Uh, it is good for stamping on non-porous surfaces like photo paper um, and things like that. Just stamping the last couple of times for my last few photos and then we're moving on to the middle section of this album. So here you'll see that I've reprinted the around here journaling cards with my typed up journaling on them, um, but I didn't want the titles of these cards to read around here. So instead I'm going to trim off that top colored portion that says around here and replace it with the corresponding colors um, that I've cut from one of the Coco Daisy pattern papers. You might have seen this pattern paper earlier in the video. Basically it has like um, alternating like blue gradient stripes and then a set of 
pink gradient stripes and then green and etc. So I trimmed off, um, I think like a quarter, a, an inch and a quarter from the pink section, green section, and navy blue section. And I'm going to use those instead of the um, around here title portion. Um, and for our, my title, I'm going to use these rub-on alphabets. And these are also from the Coco Daisy memory keeping kits. If you've never used rub-ons before, basically they're like a translucent sticker that's attached to a carrier sheet. Um, and then there's a backing sheet that prevents it from being rubbed onto any unwanted surfaces before you actually get it onto your project. So the way that I like to use them is um, I just cut around each letter so that it cuts through both the carrier sheet, which is clear, and the backing sheet, which is that um, white piece that you see. And then once I position all of my letters in place, um, I take the letters off of the backing sheet and then put the carrier sheet onto where I want to apply uh, each letter. And then you just use like a popsicle stick or you can use like a any sort of burnishing tool that you have um, to burnish down the letters so that it sticks on from the carrier sheet to your piece of paper. And the advantage of having rub-ons is number one, it's a lot cheaper than using uh, stamps. If you, um, these were provided in the Coco Daisy kit, so we didn't have to pay separately from the, for them, but um, they're, they're cheaper in general if you want to purchase them separately. It's less messier than using stamping because you don't have to worry about the ink. And you can see quite clearly where the letters are going to line up before you um, place them down. So um, because the carrier sheet is transparent, um, you can pretty much position the letters however you want them to be um, before you rub them down. And they're able to be repositioned before you rub them down. So you can see here that um, I'm using my tweezers to handle each letter. Um, and that's just because I don't want to be touching the back of the letter um, once it's off the backing sheet um, because I don't want any of the letter to rub off on my fingers. Another tip for using rub-ons or for stamping titles in general um, is to start with the middle letter first. So you'll notice that I, whenever I spell out a, a, a title, I always count the number of letters plus the spaces that that title contains. And then I find the middle part and I'm using my Tim Holtz design ruler to find where the center of my title is. And I use that to center my title onto the journaling card. Um, it's not 100% perfect because some letters are wider than other letters, but it kind of is good enough for me. So this is another tip for you. Some of the cons of using rub-ons are, number one, of course, they are able to be used up. So unlike stamps, you can't use the same letter over and over again. So there is a chance that you might run out of a particular letter um, before you um, are able to use the rest of the pack up. And second of all, um, some of the rub-ons, depending on what companies you get them fr from, might dry out over time um, and it causes them not to rub on to um, the surface that you're planning on using them properly. Now, I haven't had these Coco Daisy ones for long enough to know whether or not they would dry out over time, um, but that's just something to keep in mind when you buy rub-ons from other companies is that um, you wanna try to make sure you use them up sooner rather than later um, so that they don't dry out on you over time. So the rub-ons do take a bit of time to do, but I don't think it takes significantly longer than stamping does, so um, I was happy with how this turned out. Moving on to this interactive pocket that I have in the front of my album, um, I'm trying to decide which of the Coco Daisy pattern papers I want to use to line the inside of the pocket as well as on the outside. And I wanted to try to incorporate all of the um, predominant colors that are in this collection. So the corally pink color and the green and also the blues. Um, so that's how I chose the papers that I wanted to use in here. Matting the inside of this pocket was easy. So um, basically you just measured the um, height and the width of the pocket flap. And um, I cut my pattern paper to be a quarter of an inch shorter on both sides so that there's an eighth of an inch border all the way around when you put the pattern paper inside the pocket. And matting the outside of the pocket is quite similar. So um, I also measured the height and width of that pocket and cut my pattern piece of paper down to size. And then I put the pattern piece of paper inside the pocket and I use the edge of the pocket to trace a line on to the pattern piece of paper. And that gives me the exact 
angle at which I need to cut the pattern paper so that once I trim off the bottom of this pattern piece of paper, um, the pattern paper will fit exactly onto the outside of that pocket that I have there. You'll also notice that for my journaling cards and photos, I use my Tombow Mono permanent adhesive tape runner to adhere um, those pieces onto the pages. However, for this outside pocket, because I'm going to be flipping the page um, back and forth, I'm going to be using score tape just because it's a better adhesive um, and I'm more confident that it'll hold up over time as I'm flipping through this, this album. Into this pocket, I'm including some screenshots of a couple of news articles that were published on this day, as well as a screenshot of what the weather looked like for the day. Um, now, I did the weather screenshot the day afterwards so that I could capture the whole 24 hours, like what the weather looked like. Um, so that's an idea if you want to include just some pieces of ephemera in your um, day in the life project. Last but not least, I'm working on the title page for this particular day in the life. So I've printed out a photo collage of all 12 main photos that I took during that day. And I also used the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill to add my date title to the front of this project in gold foil. And I thought this turned out so nice. It did take me a while to figure out how to use the foil quill with my um, brother scan and cut machine, but it did work. Um, I can show a tutorial sometime in the future if you are interested. And I did film a tutorial as well on how I created that photo collage on my phone. So if you're interested in seeing that, then just leave a comment down below and I will try to upload that as soon as I can. So here I'm just creating a hinge using the vellum piece um, and I just wanted the vellum piece to be able to fold up to reveal that photo collage. And this whole assembly is going to go on the front of this day in the life mini album that I have here. Just to note whenever you're scoring on vellum uh, to create like a fold mark, make sure that you're not pressing your scoring tool too hard into your scoring board um, just because vellum is a bit more delicate than cardstock is and I have had occasions where I've ripped through the vellum just by pressing on the scoring tool too hard. And as usual for any interactive elements, I'm using score tape to make sure that this um, sticks down and doesn't come off no matter how many times I flip this up. And that pretty much finishes up my album. I did add some embellishments um, off screen. So you can see here that I've added some Coco Daisy chipboard pieces as well as some of the die cut phrase stickers that came um, as part of their die cut packs from the memory keeping kits. With the chipboard pieces, just keep in mind um, that when I added them, I peeled off some of the extra layers so that they weren't as thick, just because you still want your album to be able to close by the time you're done. And I did notice that the Coco Daisy chipboard pieces, if you put two of them facing each other, um, if they rub against each other, they tend to, like one of the colors might rub off on the other one. So I made sure to stagger my chipboard pieces throughout the album so that they wouldn't be touching each other just in case that was a problem. And overall, I really love how this album turned out. Um, I like that I was able to incorporate the 4x6 type style that Ali had um, in her Day in the Life 2021 kits, as well as the interactive um, album part that I really enjoy creating. I hope you enjoyed watching this process video and maybe found some tips and tricks that you could take um, and incorporate into your Day in the Life albums. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I will be doing uh, the second uh, Day in the Life project in the fall. Thanks for watching.